This video is sponsored by Rin. More on that later. Hello and welcome back to Jarvis Johnson. Not to be confused with Jarvis Johnson Gold, the premium channel that is free. It is, it is free. That is my second channel that I've been posting on a lot over the past four months. If you had no idea that I have been posting on other channels like Jarvis Johnson Gold, Jarvis Johnson Live on my Twitch, hello. It's been a while. Welcome home. <laughs> also, there's like some stuff that you probably missed out on, so feel free to check that out. Also, I'm wearing clothes. They're clothes that I made. I made the clothes, and you can have the clothes too. I just put out the, my first like merch in, in many years. It's a cool little try my best thing. I'm pretty excited about it. If it's not sold out, then you can buy it now. Today is a momentous occasion. It's the day that I follow up on a promise I feel like I made two to three years ago at this point, whenever I made my first video about the first High School Musical movie. I wrote a lot of the script of this video a very long time ago. And I put it away because I was like, nobody on YouTube is going to care about this. But now I'm back and I care about this. That's all that matters here. I have been waiting for 15 years to make a lot of specific observations about High School Musical 2. And that is precisely what we're going to do today. How long is this video? Probably two long, that is. Not to be confused with High School Musical 2. Which brings me to my next point. Today's video is sponsored by Ren. Question. Are you like me? Do you want more High School Musical movies and shows to come out in the future? I thought so. So we need to work together to make sure Troy and Gabriella and the gang make it to the 30-year High School Musical reunion. And today's sponsor, Ren, is here to help. Ren is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint and then offset it by funding projects that help to plant trees, protect rainforests, and suck carbon from the sky. It's an easy way to start helping with the climate crisis. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out your carbon footprint and how you can reduce it. Of course, no one can reduce their carbon footprint to zero, so you can offset what's left after reducing. Once you sign up to make a monthly contribution, you'll begin getting updates about projects that are planting trees and helping the rainforest, and you'll see where your money is being spent. One of the projects that caught my eye recently was that Rin supporters helped to send clean cooking fuel to 7,500 refugee families in Uganda, and it's pretty rad. I don't know. It feels good to get updates and read about actual people who are being helped by this project. It'll take a lot to end the climate crisis, but you can start helping today by learning more at Ren.co. I have partnered with Ren to plant 10 extra trees for the first 100 people who sign up using my referral link in the description down below. And remember, we're all in this together. Hey, thanks to Ren for sponsoring this video. Let's just move into the movie. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jarvis and welcome back to East High. Today we'll be discussing a cinematic masterpiece, a work so transcendent that its magnificence has yet to be replicated. Though many have tried. Am I talking about Citizen Kane? No. Am I talking about Citizen Kane 2? I couldn't think of another cinematic masterpiece. Today we're talking about the 2007 Disney Channel original movie, High School Musical 2. High School Musical 2 takes the raw coal of the first movie and turns it into a diamond. It improves so much upon the first movie that for its squeakquel, High School Musical 3, they had to put it in theaters because it was, it had outgrown its humble Disney Channel beginnings. But try as they might to recreate the magic of High School Musical 2, they failed, as anyone would. High School Musical 2 is the greatest achievement in cinematic history. I'll die on this hill, specifically this hill. You know the one. For those who don't remember the plot of High School Musical 1, don't worry, because it has no bearing on the plot of High School Musical 2. But for context, Troy Bolton is the leader of the East High Wildcats basketball team, as well as the entire school, I think. That is until freaky genius girl Gabriella Montez enrolls in the school. I don't want to be the school's freaky genius girl again. Inspiring Troy to put his reputation on the line and prove that you can play basketball and sing also. The basketball team, led by Troy's father, a human basketball, and Chad Danforth, a theater kid who hates theater. It's all costumes and makeup. Oh, dude, it's frightening. Aren't supportive at first, but eventually they see the light and decide to support their boy Troy on his other ventures, his singing career. Meanwhile, Gabriella makes friends with the smart kids and wins the academic decathlon while also getting a part in the spring musical, proving that smart kids can sing too. Troy and Gabriella do this while fighting off the wretched evil twins, Ryan and Sharpay, who try to thwart Gabriella at every turn by checks notes 
enrolling her in clubs. <laughs> there is no harm in making certain that Gabriella is welcome into school activities that are, <laughs> well, appropriate for her. But eventually Ryan and Sharpay join the team and everyone sings, we're all in this together. And that's the first movie. All that character development was nice, but none of it is present in High School Musical 2. High School Musical 2 is like the new game plus of High School Musical. Everything starts from scratch, but you get to keep your party from the previous playthrough. Most importantly though, everyone seems to have complete amnesia when it comes to their character arcs in the previous movie. High School Musical 2 starts with a very familiar scene. Uh, for starters, they're in high school and they're in class taught by Miss Darbus. No relation. So do allow the shimmering lights of summer to refresh and illuminate your fertile young mind. Everyone is anticipating school being out for the summer, so naturally they begin chanting. Summer. Summer. To summer. All the roles and summer. The entire summer. Season. This, of course, leads us into a song. After all, we are in High School Musical 2. <laughs> The gang is singing and dancing about how school is out, how summer's finally here, and all the big plans they have. What time is it? Summer time. But they refuse to leave the school. <laughs> they refuse to go home and, uh, I don't know, enjoy their summer. They just stay on campus and dance. Of course, some of this dancing involves a basketball, uh, because what else are you going to do with a basketball? You're going to dance. Looking back on it now, it's unclear why they chose this specific day to sing and dance about summer. Uh, to the untrained eye, uh, it might seem like school is out for the summer, as it is what everyone is singing about and also what is written on the chalkboards. But no, you would be wrong, because the very next scene, they're back in school. <laughs> guys and no one is like hey guys what the fuck was that <laughs> like we just tr completely trashed the school and chad kissed miss darvis a fact that will never be addressed it's doubly embarrassing for chad because he's wearing a shirt that says majored in summer doesn't even know when summer starts meanwhile gabriella and sharpay still have uh, an unresolved conflict <laughs> but troy is on the way to deliver a little surprise and what's the gift it's a T. It's a T for Troy so that he can brand Gabriella with his name. That way when she wears the necklace in the summertime, it can burn a T into her neck like the dark mark. <laughs> uh, they over-dramatize this moment in the movie like Troy is about to propose, um, but instead he gives Gabriella the most narcissistic gift of all time. So in this movie, everybody wants to get a job for the summer so that it can afford college or a car or whatever. Um, Troy offers also to teach Gabriella a twisted flip on a skateboard. So I guess that's what the T stands for. T is in twisted flip on a skateboard. Then they leave the school and, and start like reprising the song from earlier about how school is out. I truly don't know what's supposed to be going on here, but I guess now school's out for real. And after a summertime game of basketball with the boys and dad, Troy gets an ominous call asking if he wants a job. Talk to me. This is Thomas Fulton, general manager of Lava Springs Country Club here in Albuquerque. I understand you've been looking for summer work. First of all, how did you get this number? <laughs> like, this is, is this a horror movie now? Would you like to take a job? That sounds fantastic, Mr. Fulton. Uh, but how'd you get my name? Anyway, the boys are being boys and bouncing the ball in the bouse. I mean, <laughs> I mean the house. Until Mrs. Bolton comes in and kills the whole vibe. <laughs> Can we all redirect this energy by carrying in the groceries? All she ever does is kill the fun. And Troy and Basketball Dad just want to have a good time. In case you haven't noticed yet, the Disney Channel hates moms. <laughs> it's like, it's, a, they're f it's full of anti-mom propaganda. There's nothing to fear. Mama's here. The ominous job offer that Troy received was for Lava Springs, which is a resort owned by Sharpay's family that features a pool, a golf course, uh, no springs whatsoever, and definitely no lava. That specific, that one is a is a liability issue, but no springs. In my opinion, the most dangerous thing about Lava Springs is their liberal use of the papyrus font. <laughs> the iconic design of Lava Springs is consistent with Sharpay, who has fabulous misspelled on both her car and locker, like a real queen should. I want autocorrect. That is my simple request. <laughs> 
Got him. This brings us to the second iconic track of the movie, which is Fabulous. All of the songs are iconic, actually, except for the one that shall not be named, and that thankfully never made it to television, and it's been stricken from the record. It's stricken from the canon. It does not exist... Uh, though it is on the Disney Plus version, and that was upsetting. Again, it's like a super culturally appropriative song that shouldn't exist. The song Fabulous is about how Sharpay enjoys the finer things in life. Lifeguards from Spain, towels from Turkey, and Turkey from Maine. And Turkey imported from Maine. Bet you didn't even know Maine had Turkey. Not very fabulous of you. We also meet Sharpay's underlings, who, according to this BuzzFeed quiz, have names. The Sharpettes? Anyway, also Ryan is here too. And Ryan is the most underutilized member of the cast. I guess Taylor as well. Ryan has an iconic showing in this movie, actually. Okay, so it's time for work, and Troy arrives with what seems like the entire student body of East High. Honestly, how Troy finesse so many jobs for his friends is beyond me. But who am I to question a job creator? Sharpe sees Troy, she freaks out, her plan is working, etc. cetera. Um, but then she sees Gabriella and she freaks out. Naturally, threat. she's threatened. That's public enemy number one. So she stages a fall into the very shallow pool where she is in absolutely no danger. <laughs> But that doesn't stop Gabriella's stunt double from coming to her rescue. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Who's that? Speaking of water, Troy's eyes are bluer than the ocean. Literally. No, they color graded this movie very blue. Everything, the blues are popping in this movie. It's weird, actually. But yeah, I'd swim in Troy's eyes. Despite Sharpay's character arc in the previous movie, she still seems hellbent on ruining Gabriella's life. Like, damn girl, <laughs> I thought we were all in this together. Sharpay likes to act like she's the boss of everyone and everything here in Lava Springs despite the fact that she is just a teen, but to aid her in her tyrannical rule, she enlists the help of Fulton, her lead henchman, but also just a guy who works for her parents. Just a, just a man. This is just a guy who works for the Evanses. I want them out. But your mother specifically oh, said- Don't mention that backstabbing Yoki to me. If you can't fire them, make them want to quit. Fulton's the bad guy. However, what we're looking for from all of you is not inspiration, but perspiration. He's always so evil. He's so evil the way he tells him to stop skipping work. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm beginning to miss detention with Miss Darbus. I would rather be locked up than chop a bell pepper. <laughs> so anyway, Troy does what he can to rally his friends around the joys of labor, and he does this by singing a song. You got to work. The song is called Work This Out, and it's about how if you stop complaining about work, you can enjoy life and buy things with money. The song features incredible choreography, use of non-traditional instruments, Chad still obsessed with basketball. Also about Chad, notice how much he's dancing. Look at him, indisputably dancing. We'll come back to this. Work This Out was my favorite song in 2007, which is why if you go back to the earliest video on this channel, you will see me dancing to the song. Even when I was 14, I loved labor. Blowing off work with a song can be pretty tiring, so Troy and Gabriella sneak away to blow off blowing off work with a picnic. What secret little nook did these two lovebirds escape to? In open field, that's where. Are you sure it's okay for us to be out here? Nah, unless the jackrabbits turn us in. Or you know, anyone, just anyone, anyone can see you. <laughs> Now, it's probably not hard to see them at all because they're out in the open, but Sharpay doesn't want to take any chances, so she's using binoculars and the high ground to, <laughs> to keep her eyes on Troy and Gabriella. And Sharpay is not having it, so she turns on the sprinklers and uh-oh, she made the date cuter! Code red! <laughs> Code red! Oh no! So finally Fulton comes in to break things up and uh-oh, now they have to find a new way to avoid work. Luckily, they hear music playing in the music room, and it's Kelsey who's written a song just for them. In case you need a reminder, Kelsey was the in-universe composer of the original High School Musical, and she has this magical ability to imbue Troy and Gabriella with her music and lyrics so they never have to look at a page. She just plays the music, and they know the song, and they can harmonize, and they've never rehearsed it or practiced it before or seen it in their lives, but they know it. Because they've got Kelsey on their side. And she's back at it again! Kelsey's working on a brand new song called the music in me, which I assume is about how she can literally place music inside of you. For example, here is Troy and Gabriella singing the song that they've never seen or heard before. 
because they've got the music in them. I sing your words I never said. Vanessa Hudgens sings on this song for sure, but who is singing this one line? Can't explain it. Can't explain. <laughs> it's like, who are you? Hey, Troy, remember when you were singing and dancing about the value of hard work? Maybe it's time to do some of that. Maybe we can work this out, but only if we're all in this together. <laughs> A little cheesy, but okay. With that positive attitude, they sign up for the talent show that's happening at the resort. What, you thought there wasn't gonna be a big talent show performance? <laughs> they find a way. What else? Troy and Chatty Caddy for Sharpay's daddy. <laughs> and Ryan's dad straightens his hat. You've been working out. Yoga. Ah, bring that around, there you go. This feels coded. So this movie, Sharpay's the antagonist, surprise. Uh, but her antics in this movie are like, I think a little more fucked up than they were in the last one. Troy needs a basketball scholarship and Sharpay leverages her connections to get Troy in front of the University of Albuquerque Red Hawks. I think the U of A Red Hawks would be very interested in him. Which fun fact, isn't a real team. And the University of Albuquerque isn't a real school anymore. It closed 35 years ago. They should have had Troy as a point guard. Maybe this wouldn't have happened. The central conflict of this movie is that Troy's changed. He's thinking about his future and putting that ahead of his high school girlfriend and his high school friends, and that's bad. Is that bad? Um, I mean, he doesn't do it in the most elegant of ways, but I don't know if he's, if he's a villain for trying to think about his future, you know? These people just don't understand. Troy's going after his future as a basketball star. And who are we to stop him? But he's only 5'8". Get your head in the game, buddy. Troy Bolton can do anything. And when I say anything, I'm including neglecting his girlfriend so he can rehearse with Sharpay, because he does that. It wasn't an official date type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, number three, all dates are official, whether the boy knows it or not. <laughs> no. Troy is still in the wrong here, though. Then Sharpay forces Troy to watch the redacted song from the movie, which is thankfully redacted. Fulton has a weird line here. I have a date tonight. Oh, the, the evening is young, and so are you. I don't like that. One thing I've noticed about Gabriella in this movie is that the world reset of High School Musical 2 has removed everything freaky genius girl about Gabriella, and now she's kind of just an accessory, which is lame dude i just wanted some nerd representation with the weight of his future and his current friends weighing on him troy reaches out to basketball dad which is a mistake because his dad is unhelpful and can only think about things in terms of basketball we went through this in the previous movie oh no felt weird i love that you got the team working together but you're not gonna be wildcat forever the man is just a basketball i'm sorry bart johnson an incredible performance as a basketball. Team is now, and that's, it's good. Team is now, that's good. Basketball forever, that's also good. <laughs> His dad is having a hard time connecting with him. Earlier I asked the question of what is a basketball for if not for dancing? And I wanna retract that statement because I forgot that a basketball is also for holding open the hood of a truck. Speaking of basketball, Troy gets to meet some University of Albuquerque basketball players. And she steps on the ball. <laughs> and she steps on the ball. <laughs> Oh, what is the setup of that? What is the setup of that joke? What joke could possibly have that punchline? I have no idea, so I've enlisted the help of professional stand-up comedian Curtis Connor to help me out. Curtis? Thanks, Jarvis. So I've seen this movie like hundreds of times because it is literally one of my favorites, so I know a thing or two about this line. So this is a running gag in the movie with Mr. Evans finishing a hilarious story with and she steps on the ball. But we never hear the full story before it. And that's what the director, Kenny Ortega, wants, okay? Because this is just a simple misdirection, a classic cinematic misdirection. It leads the audience to believe one thing, when in reality, it's something completely different, which is a common theme in this film. You think the new shoes and the new job and the enticing scholarship are good things, but are they really? But 
I know the true story behind this line. So in the HSMCU, the High School Musical Cinematic Universe, Mr. Evans actually has a close personal friend named Angie. And Angie actually went through a really difficult divorce a few years ago, but recently remarried to a, a really nice guy. And with that, gained a stepson. And Angie's stepson is like well known in the HSMCU as like, the funniest person to ever live. Like he's hilarious. Like literally just hearing his name makes people laugh. Cause you know, he's just so funny and goofy. And Angie's stepson's name is Thabal, spelled T-H-A-B-O-L-L. -L. So when you know that little piece of High School Musical lore, this line makes way more sense. I'll admit there's some weird pronunciation, but this is simply Mr. Evans saying, Angie's Angie stepson, the ball. <laughs> and since just mentioning his name makes people laugh, his friends absolutely lose it. <laughs> so there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that High School Musical 2 fun fact. Back to Jarvis. Thanks, Curtis. Anyway, Sharpay does what she does best and insert herself into a situation. Yeah. Oh, I knew it. Coral blue. It's perfect for your skin tone. And mine too. Ah. We are majorly skin tone compatible, Troy. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, why, did she, why would she say that? Ah. It's dinner time now, and Troy is fully in his elitism bag because he's chumming around with the college basketball boys. Ooh, that yeah. looks great. Hey, I almost forgot. I ordered Swiss on my burger. So go ahead and check it out, man. Try it. All right. See what you think. Table three. Troy, no! No! Aw. Sharpe uses her basketball leverage over Troy to force him into performing with her at the talent show, and she steals Kelsey's song. Justice for Kelsey, all right? Back to Gabriella and new Troy. Gabriella finds exactly one minute to address Troy's new personality, but uh-oh, time's up, Gabriella. New Troy's got new priorities to prioritize. On the bright side, at least she got a shot in before Troy zoomed off with his new basketball boys. Hey, Bolton, that's my ball. Now everybody's too sad to play basketball. So they play baseball. We've got basketball. We've got golf. We've got baseball. They fit so many sports into this movie. <laughs> Gabrielle invites Ryan to the baseball game because he hasn't had nearly enough screen time in this movie. And this is where Ryan becomes the star of the movie. To me, he's the best. Okay, so I know I've said this a lot, but now we're at one of the most iconic songs in the movie. The song is called I Don't Dance, and it's a song about two guys who totally dance. Swing it out, spin around, do the dance. Much has been said and written about the sexual tension between Ryan and Chad singing about not dancing while dancing. 24 Frames and Nick did a video about this, and the director of the actual movie, Kenny Ortega, who's gay, has discussed Ryan's character as being gay, but at a time when the Disney Channel wasn't ready for that conversation. What I'm getting at here is this song is hot as hell. The dancing is on point. The not dancing is on point. The incorporation of the sport of baseball is also there. Imagine my disappointment when I found out that baseball was nothing like this. After the song, Chad and Ryan have switched clothes. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it all mean? We're not meant to know. We don't deserve to know. But now Ryan has defected into the basketball boys and becomes the new Troy. Complete with, uh-oh, flirting with Gabriella. <laughs> hey. 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 Oh, how the tables have tabled. Now Troy is jealous of Ryan for having Gabriella's mom's brownies. Her mom makes the best brownies in the entire world. Yeah, I know. I've had them. Yeah, I've had the brownies. I've had the fucking brownies, Ryan. Let's run through some quick plot points. It's getting dark. <laughs> Sharpay forces Troy to perform with her at gunpoint. Troy plays basketball shirtless. Then he runs into his old friends rehearsing for a talent show while hiding behind a plant. Character development? Sharpay sees the rehearsal and she's upset that they're having fun and also that Ryan is involved. So she complains to Fulton and gets him to make it so that staff members can't perform in the talent show, which doesn't make any sense. Who else is gonna be in the talent show? The guests? I guess that makes sense, but still. But one thing that's very insignificant that I have to talk about is that in Fulton's office, he has a poster for a film called An Onion for Papa. <laughs> I think we all remember that movie from our childhoods. And that was that, there was that icon scene here I'll, I'll 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 give you a you know i'll do my own rendition of it papa here's an onion <laughs> there's also this genuine moment where we just see that fulton is a guy who doesn't want to lose his job and he's having a hard time with it and he's taking orders from a child so sometimes we have to perform tasks however unpleasant that are necessary for that all too important paycheck to land in our all too empty pockets you know, I get it. And we really do demonize Fulton and he doesn't deserve it. Where is the song that happens in every high school musical movie where Gabriella 
has like a sad ballad where she's like leaned up against the locker and talking about what's on her mind. Well, we have the song Go My Own Way, where Gabriella sings to Troy about how she has to go her own way and leave the resort and leave Troy, question mark? Unclear what she's leaving exactly. There is like a whole like singing argument going on where Troy's like, what about us? And then she's like, what about trust? It's really, you don't need to sing this. It would probably be more efficient for you to talk. But uh, I wasn't there during the filming, so they sang. Oh my God, there are lockers. Anyway, she gives him back the tea so that it doesn't burn uh, a tea into her skin. Ooh, it was this gift from earlier, uh, Chekhov's tea. <laughs> but the best part of the song is after singing her heart out to Troy, she just gets in her mom's minivan and drives away. <laughs> hey mom, can you pick me up in 30 minutes? I gotta sing dump Troy real quick. Now Troy's back at home, basketball dad sees that Troy is distraught and he's not equipped to help his son emotionally navigate the situation. He's a basketball, so he tries to feed him steaks in bed. Okay, I know a lot of you have been waiting for specifically this song, or for me to talk about this song, because it is the most memed in the 15 years since High School Musical 2, this is what uh, a lot of people remember. We're talking about Bet On It, the song where Troy interpretive dances through the rolling fields at Lava Springs. But did you know what the inspiration for his angry dancing is? Um, it's a memo. He got a, he, he got a memo and he was like, fuck, <laughs> now I gotta sing about it. It's the memo that says that staff can't perform at the talent show. And literally, he just gets the memo, Kelsey slides it over to him, and boom, next shot, we're at the golf course. <laughs> that just makes me think he saw that and he was like, I know what I need to do about this. Uh, I don't need to talk to a, a single person. I wordlessly walk away from Kelsey and I go straight to the course, straight to those the Green Hill Zone. Here's another fun fact. E! News says that Troy's dramatic solo number, Bet On It, took six days to film. Interesting. It does stand to reason that this masterpiece took a <laughs> took nearly a week to complete. Also, the grass is extremely green. Whoever color graded this movie lost their goddamn mind. <laughs> this is so green. It looks green screen. Like, what is this? It's absurd. The greens are too green. The blues are too blue. All right, we also have to talk about the <laughs> the iconic sand throw <laughs> when he jumps off of the cliff like fucking Spider Man <laughs> and lands in the sand and just goes, "Ha! Get the sand out of here!" Like what was that? <laughs> Whoa! Hold up. <laughs> okay, so we've got to talk about the moment with the world's worst CG. The year was 2007 and they could have done a lot better than this. Zac Efron, he's done his whole interpretive dance. He's he's looking into the little pond. When he doesn't recognize his face, he looks in the reflection and instead of finding a way to film the reflection, instead of just showing his face, they choose to transpose video of Zac Efron <laughs> into the water. <laughs> it's not great. Or it's perfect. It's perfect, actually. I've changed my mind. They even added ripple effects. I didn't realize how long he stared at the water. They really sat on this scene. They really sat on this fucking shot. And they were like, yo, we popped off with the water reflection. Naturally, the talent show happens. And because none of the wildcats can perform, everyone else sucks. Because it's not High School Musical if we don't watch a bunch of horrible performances by unnamed characters. Well, the only thing that would make it any lovelier would be that if I won that Star Dazzle Award. So Troy says his piece to Sharpay and walks out on the performance. What do you mean? Exactly that. And the tables are wearing hospital scrubs to symbolize how Troy surgically dismantled Sharpay. <laughs> now Sharpay's not having the best time. Troy's dropped out. Ryan, her brother, drops out of their performance. You've always wanted the spotlight. Now you've got it. Honestly, is deserved because Ryan is an integral part of Sharpay's performances and he never gets his due. He never gets the appreciation he deserves. Troy makes good with Chad because now Troy is like, I'm going to focus on what really matters and I'm going to focus on my friends. Hey, brothers fight. They're still brothers. So Troy apologizes for ruining the show. Uh, Zeke is a king as always. I messed up your show. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, because show business is our entire lives, right? 
Zeke is like show business. Who needs show business? I've got a souffle in the back and two creme brulees to flambe. Your boy is cooking, literally and figuratively. <laughs> I love Zeke. <laughs> He's so good. Dude, I want somebody to look at me the way that Chad looks at Ryan. When he talked about how good he is at baseball. We've all had a lot of fun. At least I have. Hey, you got to see his two play baseball. I won't cry. Of course, Ryan didn't actually want his sister to crash and burn. So he convinces Troy to talk to Sharpay. And she's uh, going through it. How's it going? The show makes the captor Titanic look like he won the lottery. And she compares her situation to that of the Titanic where many people died. And it's not a similar situation at all. I would know, I sunk it. But Troy has some conditions for the performance. He performs if the Wildcats perform. Cause what's High School Musical without a big old performance at the end? Sharpay, come on. I do the show if the Wildcats do the show. Plot twist though, Ryan is like, hey, my sister wants you to learn a new song. And, and of course, Troy's like a new song. We're literally about to go on stage. And then he's like, Kelsey's involved. And he's like, oh, Kelsey will use her music powers to imbue me with the song. We're good, let's do it. So Troy comes out to perform the song and what's this in the distance? It's Gabriella, actually. Gabriella. It's not Sharpay. It's not Sharpay who's to learn the song. It's Gabriella's back inexplicably, and the conflict between them is solved. <laughs> well, they didn't talk. They they didn't talk at all. But uh, so, but Gabriella's back, and they sing every day, and it's a great song. It's a good song. Why does she come back? Does she even know that Troy is a good boy now? He's good boy Troy now. And how did she learn the song? I I guess she learned it on her own time. And when did she get the tea necklace back? These are all questions that we'll never have answers because we don't need the answers. What we need is to enjoy the magnetic relationship between Gabriella and Troy. For a few seconds that is, until uh, until the rest of the Wildcats join in. And also during this song, Troy is wearing a, like a white suit and he's glowing like a boys to men video. <laughs> and I think that that's a very interesting choice, but I'm into it. So this is a bit of a false ending song because there's more. There's a fireworks show with the world's lowest resolution fireworks, but it's it's adorable nonetheless. And Troy and Gabriella share their first kiss, which is, I mean, we've been waiting, okay? <laughs> it's like, it's weird, they're in high school, but just like dramatically, it was something that they, they really set up over and over and over again and it never happens so it's a big you know i guess it's a big moment and then there's another ending song and it's another banger and i do know the choreography to this as well oh and also of course the wildcats win the talent show because their competition was a woman with a puppet <laughs> and that's the movie also miley cyrus is there for two seconds and i was wondering why and people on twitter reminded me that there was a poll for disney channel stars thanks for letting me uh you know, talk about this movie that is from my childhood that is still enjoyable to this day. It's not a good movie, but it's fun. I enjoy it. It's better than High School Musical 1, and it's better than High School Musical 3. I'll say it. It's the best in the series. Please don't fight me on this. I... <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm already winded, I can't. I cannot stress how cool I thought this movie was when it came out. I even remember the movie leaked before it aired on TV. I watched it early before it aired on television because I was that much of a super fan. That's all, thanks for letting me talk about this movie and I'll see you later. Peace out, Wildcat.